In this video, we're going to look at a few different types of functions. We're going to look at the domain and range, and then find some composite functions and inverse functions. So hopefully clear up a few of these functions words here. So firstly, I've written three functions up, and I'm just going to have a look at the first one. There are a few different ways we can write uh, what a function uh, is or what it looks like. And I've written here fx is equal to x squared minus two. And fx just pretty much means the output variable or the output if we have a input variable of x. So another way we can write this is if I put f and then a little colon here as x with a little arrow, this could be x squared minus two. So this is another way of writing fx or we could just put y equals x squared minus two. So all of these mean the same thing. Depends on what type of textbook you see, but you can use any of these expressions. Okay, so let's have a look at our three functions here. What we're first going to do is we're going to find uh, the output if we give the input some numbers. So I'm just going to go through a bunch of examples with our three functions here. So firstly, if you ever see f of a number, for example, f of three, you need to go find the function that was f, which was this one here, x squared minus two. And what we want to do is we want to sub in the number three in for x. So three is our input variable. So x was now going to be replaced with three squared minus two. And then we can just calculate what this is. So this will be nine minus two, which is seven. So what this says is that if the input variable is three, the output will be seven. And that's what f of three means. Okay, if I had g of negative two, I need to find the g x function and replace my x with negative two plus three. So if I input negative two for x into my g x function, my output is positive one because negative two plus three is one. And finally, if I had h of let's say 24, we need to find the hx function. We need to sub in 24 for x. So we'd have the square root of 24 plus one, which will be the square root of 25, which is five. Okay, so that's what we do if we want to find f of some number or g or h. We just find that function and sub it in. Okay, next we move on to domain and range. So domain and range. Now these are two words which are very important for functions and relations. Now domain is associated with the x, the possible x values and the, and the range is associated with the possible y values. So try and remember the domain is x, the, the range is y, or the domain is the input and the range is the output variables. So what, what we can do is let's have a look at our first function fx. So if I, if I write fx, is equal to x squared minus two. Hopefully we can try and get an idea of what this function looks like. So this is a quadratic function, x squared minus two. So if I were to sketch this, I'm going to have some happy face quadratic. It's a positive parabola, but it's down two units. So it's going to be something like this, where this here would be negative two. Happy face down two units. And if I want to try and find the domain and the range of this function, what the domain means is, well, what possible x values exist in this function? And if this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis, well, let's think about it. This function here seems to be going left, 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 and it's gonna to continue to go left and up forever. And if we go right, it's gonna go continue right and up forever. So the domain here is actually going to be all x values. So for this, for this function, the domain will be all x values, and we can write that by saying x is an element of, I might write that element of symbol again, of all real uh, numbers. So if you ever have a function that seems to go left and right forever, and there's no tricky bits like asymptotes or anything like that, it's going to be all real numbers. Now the range, what are the possible y values? Well, it looks to be going up forever and up forever, but it doesn't go down forever here. It seems to go down all the way to negative two, and then it comes back up. So the range 
the range is going to be the possible y values and those y values will be everything above negative 2 but it will equal negative 2 so what we can say is y is greater than and equal to negative 2 all of the y values greater than greater and equal to negative 2 exist for this function. Okay, if I were to do gx, which is x plus 3, we have a different function now. x plus 3 is a, is a straight line which passes up at 3, so it would be here. And this one's a bit of a simple one. If you have a linear, a line here, a straight line, it clearly goes left forever and right forever and down forever and up forever. The domain, which you can shorten to just capital D, X will be an element of all real and the range will be Y is an element of all real because it goes left and right forever. So that's the domain and up and down forever. Okay, and the last function, if I have HX, which is the square root of X plus one, this is an interesting function, this one here. And if you do have a calculator, I encourage you to try and sketch what this looks like and type it in. But what it's going to be, is it's going to be a function that looks like this. It has a very interesting shape, this one. I'll get rid of these dots here. Now this value here will actually be negative one here. And if you do, if you have seen functions where there's root signs, you might understand why. Uh, because uh, this x plus 1 means it's shifted one unit to the left of the origin and it's only going to be positive y values because we can't take the square root of something and get a negative number. So from here, our domain is clearly going to be all of the x values to the right of negative 1 because it doesn't exist to the left of negative 1. So x will be greater than or equal to negative 1 and the range... Well, the range is the y values. It's going to start here at when y is zero on the x-axis, and it's going to go up. Even though this looks to be plateauing out, it will continue to gradually go up forever. So the range here will be y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's the domain and range. We'll move on to composite functions. So I'll create some space here. So a composite function, composite function, you may have seen these types of questions before in your textbook. It's when they ask you to find fog or goff, or you might get different letters here, but fog and goff are the most famous composite functions. And what this is, is a function of a function. So if you want to find fog, f of g of x, what we need to do is we need to try and actually sub in a function into another function. And it's related to the fx, gx, and hx functions here. So fog, what this would be is you start with the first letter, the f function, fx, and we start writing it. And when we get to the x, we stop. And instead of writing x, we actually want to replace x with the gx function. So gx is x plus 3. So we're going to replace this x plus 3 into where x is. So fog will be x plus 3 all squared. That's what this is. And then we have our minus two. And you can expand this if you want to and collect your like terms, or you can leave it in this form here. Now, if we had g of fx, which is goff, we need to actually start with the g function, which would be x plus three. We'd stop when we get to the x and we'd replace this x with the f of x function. And the f of x function is x squared minus two. So we'd have x squared minus two, that was the x, and then we'd have plus 3, and then we can collect our like terms. It'd be x squared minus 2 plus 3, so plus 1. Okay, so that's how we do composite functions. We want to sub a function into a function. And finally, if we want to find an inverse of a function, I'll do a few examples. The inverse of fx, that's going to be written as find the inverse of fx. It's this f so this little negative one at the top here. So how we do this is we want to first write our function in the form of y equals, and then we put our function x squared minus two. If we want to find the inverse, the first step is to swap x and y. 
if we swap x and y, we're going to get x equals y squared minus 2. And then the goal after we've swapped x and y is to try and use algebra to get y to be the subject. So if we add the 2 over, x plus 2 is equal to y squared. And then if we square root both sides, we're going to get x plus 2 inside the square root sign is equal to y. And once we have got y by itself, this is actually our inverse function. So therefore, our inverse function is the square root of x plus 2. I'll do one more. If I want to find the inverse of hx, this one here, we start with y equals, and we put x plus 1, then we want to swap x and y, that's always the first step. So x equals the square root of y plus 1, and then to get y by itself, I'm going to square both sides. So x squared is equal to y plus 1. I can get the y by itself by subtracting the 1 over. So x squared minus 1 is equal to y. And now that we have y by itself, that will be our inverse of hx. So h to the negative 1 of x is x squared minus 1. Now, once you start building an understanding of functions, you'll, you'll, just, you'll explore what composite functions and inverse functions actually mean. I'll give you a little bit of an insight. The inverse function is actually the reflection of the original function. If we have something like this, the inverse function will be something like this. It will be a reflection in this line of y equals x. Composite functions have an interesting uh, meaning to it. So please try and uh, look at your textbook or ask your teacher about the meanings of these things. But this video, the goal was to just try and understand uh, what a function looks like, how to find domain and range, how to find the composite functions and inverse functions. Okay, good luck.